YouTube, I am back here with yet another book review. Now, I've not done one for probably about a year, but book reviews are what helped me to make my name here on YouTube. And I talk about wrestling books, something that a lot of people generally don't really do. The only people that I remember have talked about wrestling books and really done a review on them are um, Mark Pearson, that's all really, and he doesn't really make videos anymore. So yeah, this is what tra this is what I did to set myself up away from the rest of the pack, to not really do the same videos as everyone else, to not get involved in the drama. I want to talk about books, because books are important. When I was a kid, now I was one of those who was like, oh, books, I don't read, reading's rubbish, why should I read? I want to play some Xbox and have a kick around with my mates. No, books are really important, especially in pro wrestling, like, I've got one right here, the Bret Hart book, my, one of my favourite things that I own is my Bret Hart book. Anyway, let's get on with the video. This is obviously about the book titled Benoit. Now, when Chris Benoit died, a lot of people came out of the woodwork and started thinking, do you know what, I can make a little bit of money out of this. I can make a little bit of money out of what's happening. Now, I don't blame them because along with the fact that they could make a little bit of money out of it, they thought, do you know what, I've got something to say about this and I want my opinions heard and I want to give my opinion on what's happened. And when it is something like this, when it's something that we'll never find the truth about, all we've got is opinions. So the WWE would like to make us believe that oh, everyone else's opinion doesn't matter, especially when it comes to this Chris Benoit case saying, oh, anything else that you hear about Chris Benoit isn't true, you've got to hear the facts from us. Now, although that he was working for them at the time of his death, they weren't his best mates. Vincent Mann wasn't his best mate. Vincent Mann didn't know all about him. There's other people who knew about him who knew the inside story. Now, of course, the writers of this book didn't really know the inside story, but they've done an enough research to produce a book. Now, obviously, the title of the book, Benoit. So here we go. Let's get into it. The author, it has five authors. Um, Stephen Johnson, Heath McCoy, Irv Muchnick, and Greg Oliver. You might have heard the name Irvin Muchnick before because, um, not Jim Ross, Jim Cornette went absolutely mental at him. In 1997, on an episode of Raw, he cut an awesome promo on Irvin Muchnick saying, listen, you write bullshit about pro wrestling because you are an angry man. You're upset about pro wrestling being popular. You're upset that pro wrestling makes a lot of money. Fuck you, Irvin Muchnick. That's basically what Jim Cornette said. The publisher of this book was ECW, ECW Press, I believe. Um, the year was 2007, and the price, I'm not too sure, but I'm guessing it'd be around the $10, $15 mark, which works out about 7 to 10 quid. Was it worth it? <clears throat> this book is probably not worth your money. I got it on ebook. I got sent it by a friend, and I read it. It was alright. I did, I enjoyed it. The fact of the matter is, a lot of the stuff in this book you've got to take with a pinch of salt because it's not fact. It's all opinion. They'll tell you a lot of stuff and pretend that it's fact, but that doesn't mean that it's all true. Now, of course, there's a huge, there's a huge topic about Chris Benoit, and I don't know whether to cover it here in this video or to do a separate video about it to make sure to give it the justice it deserves. I'm going to touch on it a little bit now, and if you do want me to go in further detail on what happened with Chris Benoit, like I said at the beginning of this video, not really a lot of facts, just a lot of opinion. If you want me to do a video like that, let me know down here. It's all up to you, this, because I don't want to come on. I don't want to be like these guys and be like, oh. I can express my full opinion on what happened and uh, expect everyone else to believe it. I, I don't really want to be like that, especially with something like this that's such a touchy subject and something that obviously nobody knows fully about. So I don't really want to come on here and start spouting off a lot of opinions on something as uh, emotional as that. But if you do want me to do that, I'll put a video together and I'll try and be as respectful as possible and make that video as entertaining as I can. But yeah, let me know down here. And if you don't want me to do it, then again, let me know down there. And then I'll see whatever popular opinion is, I'll go with that. So right, this book, I wish I had it in hand so I could just flick through it and talk about little bits. Um, it was it, like I said, it was interesting. But a lot of the time, you just you left to think, hmm, I wonder if this is true. One of the, the most interesting things that was said in this book was the fact that it's widely believed that the 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 Benoit child, Daniel, the one that Benoit apparently murdered, it was widely believed that he had fragile X syndrome, which meant that Benoit was giving him drugs to make him stronger. Now, apparently, 
All this just comes from one woman on one radio show saying it and then it snowballed from there. Everyone was saying, yeah, yeah, this is true, this is true, this is true. And then WWE came out and said, yeah, we back this up, we, we back that up. Daniel did have that. It could have just been a clever ploy from the WWE to just leak that information out, even though it's some misinformation. Who knows? This is something that I find really upsetting about the story is that a lot... A lot of people came out of the woodwork trying to just fulfil their own needs here, like writing books, apparently there's a film coming out about it. And on the other side of this, there's people who wanted to come out and actually help and give fans like me who really wanted to know what happened here as a distraught fan like, oh my god, what's happened? Chris Benoit's killed his wife and child. I couldn't fathom it, I couldn't understand what was happening. The only way I could deal with it was making jokes with my mates about it. But if I actually sat down to think about it, which a lot of people probably did, I probably would have bawled my eyes out, which I'm sure a lot of people did do. <clears throat> Luckily, I was an immature child, so I just joked my way through. But yeah, um, these are the things that a lot of people were doing at the time. Then you had the WWE. The WWE came out, and they were dead set against anybody. Anybody who wasn't currently under contract with the WWE talking about this subject, they were dead set against it. They had their own wrestlers coming out, like uh, Chris Jericho. and uh, Jericho might not have been under contract, but he was on great terms and obviously ended up going back to the WWE within like a year or two. But what they had Jericho do, or maybe Jericho decided to do off his own back because he, he was in good standing with the WWE, was come out and rubbish the opinions of other professional wrestlers. For example, Mark Merrill got an awful amount of stick at the time for coming out and saying, listen, something needs to be done about pro wrestling. There's a lot of deaths, there's a lot of drugs going on. It needs to be stopped. A lot of people came out and said, what the fuck do you know, Mark Merrill? You've not been wrestling for a long time. But why why come out with stuff like that? Why, why did people have to go and attack Mark Merrill? I'll tell you why. It was a blatant chance to deflect from the Benoit story. Look, this is like, like, there's a burning car crash over there, like, you want to distract people from looking at it, you'll cause a scene on the other side, like, oh shit, look at me over here, look at me over here. Everyone turns away, like, oh shit, Chris Jericho and Matt Merrow are arguing over there. Jericho's taking the piss out of Mero. Now, I don't think it's right. <clears throat> but then again, who's to say what's right or wrong? Jericho was obviously <clears throat> a better friend with Benoit than Merrow was. Merrow was coming on TV and apparently trying to serve his own needs. I don't really think he was. I just think he was contacted or maybe he contacted them saying, listen, I can come on and I can talk about this. And he did talk about it. And I respect everyone who did come out and give, did give their opinion. And People who did go out there and tried to make a profit from it, you, you can't blame them. If they are in a situation where they feel that, listen, I need to create myself some profit out of this. Like, I can see myself making some profit out of doing this. And if they need to do that for their families, then so be it. If they, if they need to put bread on the table, let's not take food out of their kids' wa wives, mouths even. Let's let them do it. Anyway, I've rambled enough about this book. I've barely talked about the book. The book was okay. That's all you need to know about the book. Um... <clears throat> Would I buy it if I were you guys? No. If you can get it for free, if a friend has a copy and says, oh yeah, take it, I didn't really like it. Pick it up and say, listen up, mate. I'll take it, I'll read it, and I'll give it you back in a few weeks. Do it, read it. It's a very interesting book. A very, very interesting book. Um, yeah, so it, it chronicles all the stuff that happened, like all, all the media coverage, and, and it's a very negative book on the WWE. It constantly talks about how the WWE needs to change its ways and stuff like that, and this is why the WWE used to, were coming out and rubbishing their ideas, like, oh no, what do you know about it? Rather than just coming out and saying, listen, something terrible has happened here. If we knew anything about it, we would have tried to stop it. We are going to now put extra efforts into making sure that all of our guys are even more protected than ever. If they would have done that, things would have been rosy, but no, they started a slangy match saying, no, oh, we're better than you, no, we're better than you, oh, bollocks. This has been my review of the book. Let me know what you thought of the book down below. Let me know what you think of the video. Again, if you want me to do a crisp on my video where I talk about a lot of basically my opinions on what happened, what I think might have happened, and other stuff, other factual stuff that did happen, like, for example, chronicling uh, who came out and then who argued against who and all that, 
then I'll do one. If you don't want me to do it because it's a touchy subject and you don't think I'm qualified enough to do it, which I accept, and you're my viewers, then tell me down here. Because it's all about you guys. If you guys don't want to see it, if it's going to be poor decency to do it, then I'm not going to do it. If you guys want to see it and think that I'm equipped to do it and think that you just want to hear my opinions on it, I will do it. Thank you very much for watching. Hit the subscribe button. Tell me to hit it. Tell him to tell his mama. Don't tell Broders Clay's mama because he's been a bad man and you'll get him and all that. I'm tired. I'm blabbering. Thanks very much for watching.